Welcome back to Cricket for Americans. Snick here. Gabe, the Night Watchman. And before you get any hate going on, I be wearing the baggy green too. My man left us at home and we've got to make sure the Australia fans are rocking. Or we both be rocking because you know we're talking about the test season. Woo! Duh. All right. Episode un. That's a little French for you. That's like all I remember from high school French. <laughs> and it's been a long time coming for this to come out. It's been a long time coming for us to actually watch it and react to it and talk about it. So we're going to be talking everything we can think of from episode one. Stay tuned later on in the week for episode two and the next week, the last two episodes of the season. Right. And as we get into it, please do us a huge favor. Please don't forget to like subscribe we have every episode from season one if you've not seen our reviews on that you can check it out and you can kind of see us years ago and kind of see the the production quality has mm -hmm. gone down just a smidge but if you like and subscribe we appreciate it. we're gonna jump right into it okay right. and i know he's got a lot of thoughts i'm gonna start off with this okay because i know he's your man right uzi first uzi. thing i noticed as i'm watching this show he's got a slytherin <laughs> sweatshirt on being a huge Harry Potter fan. Now, unless Slytherin is like a city in Australia or it's something else or it means something else, I think it's the Harry Potter thing. I thought that was absolutely hilarious. Let me know if it's like a brand name or something else because it's straight up Slytherin on his chest. Thought that was awesome. But this episode talked a lot about, uh, maybe a little, I'm getting the first was mixed up, a lot about Uzi to a certain degree. Right. Right? And it's funny too because... When uh, we won't get into too much stuff from episode two, this is just episode one. When this was going on, like before the ashes, during the ashes, or whatever, and you've been calling for Uzi forever, and right. you always talked about like does jail, does he not like him because right. he's letting personal feelings get in the way or whatever? And it's interesting how they didn't go so honest with that, but we get to start off with that a little bit. Right. And I'm sure you had to be excited to see your man Uzi there, for sure. some family life. You kind of see how like these players are real people and right. how that kind of affects stuff right i mean here's the thing first and foremost it's it's, it's funny it, it, I, the test is really what got me it got me first and foremost to be a fan of australia I right so much, i fell yeah. in love with, with the team i think that australians probably it's funny remind me more of americans than than any other international team right because they're they're you know they're australians they're loud they sledge you know what I mean? That's that's how American sports are. You know what I mean? There's a uh, there, there, yep. there's a lot of aggression there, and I fell in love with Uzi's character and not character. That's who he is. Is his personality yeah. in the first season? You just loved him wearing the Yankees hat. He was rocking season. the Yankee fitted, and I was gonna say, no, that's Slytherin. I'm I'm Slytherin too. Slytherin are the bad guys, oh, the evil the umpire. When you're the yes. Yankees, you're the evil umpire. It is what it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, 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 so that's kind of his personality, and they did focus on it there. Um. You know, I want to talk a little bit about how I, what I loved about this this episode and what I didn't like about this episode. Because for me, when you don't talk about something and it's almost like bring it up, you know what I mean. The worst thing you can do is ignore it. Worst yeah. thing you can do is ignore the it. Elephant in the room. Yeah, the elephant in the room. Because when you don't talk about it, then it be it, it shows a that it bothers you and b that you're trying to duck it. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you gotta hit some stuff head on. The easiest way to do it is just bring it up yourself or whatever. And one of the things I was disappointed about this episode was that they didn't really talk about the GABA. I would have liked to have seen guys go at each other like, yo, we were embarrassed. And they talked about a little bit. We were embarrassed, yeah, but they didn't show any clips, right? I would have loved to see people go in there and just go ham. Like, yo, this is unacceptable. Like, Play right now, something like that. what's going on in, with, with, with the India-Australia series, right? You, you got Patty Cummings... In a press conference, literally saying, like, no, you know what? We're not trying our best out there. We're not doing our... Because it's it's evident. And you got to, as a captain, step up. And that's what I think should have happened. And, and they really didn't give us... They just talked about how... Oh, man, that... They just talked about briefly that... 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 It, that... that uh, uh, Test series with India and Australia and was just I terrible. I loved how they mentioned yeah. the B squad for India. Right. So they brought that up. We didn't just get beat at home by India. We got beat by their B squad for crying out loud. Right. You know what I mean? I would have loved to sit, have some backyard, uh, back uh, scene footage of, you know, cans being kicked and Tim Payne losing colors. his mind yep. or whatever. That didn't happen. What they did talk about, though, was, again, the Tim Payne and how can you uh, 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 avoid it. 
having to step down as captain. And that's really what they gave us almost at the very beginning of the episode was yeah. they th this guy that led us through the test season one. And if, for, for a quick recap, test season one was coming on the heels of... Cape Town. Yep, of Sand Cape Town. Gate. Sandpaper Gate. You lose your two captains, right, in Bancroft. And, um, and you, or your your captain and vice captain and Steve Smith and Warner Warner and right Bancroft is in there too yeah so Warner uh, Smith and Bancroft all banished and whatnot and in the one of the darkest periods of uh, 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 cricket or Test cricket I should say in Australian history yeah. they go to Tim Pandela who the wicket keeper that's who we're giving the everybody was even saying it he was the right guy to lead him out and he took it from being darkness to having a uh, a uh, uh, they even mentioned it, cricket, uh, cricket in Australia be respectable again, right? To where people are enjoying Australians coming back. We're no longer the villains. And, uh-oh, some personal vices come in. And he has to go up. And, I mean, I'm not even making light of it. It's I couldn't man. imagine having to go up there. Because the guy was married, too, right? Yeah. And kids. And say, I did something inappropriate. I take some pictures I shouldn't have done. Uh, there was some other information that people had said on Twitter. I don't know how true that is or whatever. Some yeah. infidelity. But, dude... Like, I wanted to start with that because they talk about the reality of how we're still men. We're still fallible. And even outside, like you were talking about, they show Uzi and his family. Even outside of the sport, you know what I mean? They're still people. Yeah. And they still make mistakes. And that kind of stuff really just comes into the play, into play in the game. The tough thing about the Tim Payne thing, as I think they hound it very, very well. One thing I'm going to say about this show, and it reminds me of season one, I love just the production value. Mm -hmm. I love the style that they do things where you feel like you're right there sitting down in the third row as Tim Payne's coming in. Like you just, it gives a very real feel. And I like that. But you have Tim Payne come in, admit to it, step down. And there's no like six months suspension. There's no like, he'll get a redemption chance. He's Bye. done. Bye. And he was probably close to retirement anyways. Bye. Because he was always that guy that was never supposed to be there, so to speak. Right. Definitely not supposed to be a test captain. Right. And I'm, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the biggest Australian cricket team hater, right? You got to give him some credit for what for he was sure. able to do for to sure. lead those boys out of the black, so to speak. But there's no redemption story for him per, you know, in the, the media. Like, that's it. And... For everyone else, okay, we're moving on to Pat Cummins. We're moving on here and there. On the heels of the Ashes. Because it was like three weeks to yes, the Ashes. Like, what? Exactly. And that could be a huge distraction. We could talk about that later. But he goes home, and now it's just, he's got to deal with all of And I'm not trying to say that, you know, I'm not getting in the judgment game whatsoever. It's none no, of my no, business. No, no. I make mistakes. He's not over there analyzing that, so I'm not going to get into that kind of stuff. Not mistakes to that degree. But none, no one's perfect, right? But that's what's sad for me is this just, here it is, no redemption story. And I give him credit for going on to the, uh, the Indian documentary about the GABA and speaking about that kind of stuff. But then you have, okay, we need a new captain, okay? Right. And I may talk a little more about Pat Cummins in, in a different type of avenue, but what he was able to do to take the reins, shortcoming, you know, short time or whatever, was nothing sheer of absolutely amazing. You have England... You can't allow the enemy, so to speak, the palms to come into Australia when you are kind of like, you know, distracted and really? you're hurting here right, and there. Yeah. Really, and there you go. And steal a few matches. Right. And Pat Cummins, I liked his approach. I liked how he he was hum he seemed humble about it, right. but he wasn't scared of it. He was ready to take on the challenge. He was sitting there like, do I go like this or do I go like this? The Jason <laughs> Holder or everyone else? I would have voted for the Jason Holder. Right. But because that for me, that's his style. But that's the kind of stuff he's worried about. Right. He's like, I got to wake up early now and I got to get to the computer and get right. to the lab. I liked that part of it. And it's amazing what he did, but it's just, it's it's sad what happened with Tim Payne and all that kind of stuff because there's no redemption to it. Right. After Sandpaper Gate, Steve Smith comes back a year later, right? right? I mean, he's still, he's smudge. He's smudge. Come on. Come on. Um, but anyways, that's kind of my thoughts right there. And talk about Pat real quick. I got my notes right here. I loved how he, he seems like a pretty humble guy. Right. I don't like some of the sound bites, but I guess, you know, he's captain now. He feels like he's got to defend his team and their decisions. But... He meets his wife at college. He's already a cricket star right. to a certain degree. And she's like, oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm just a student. Right, right, right. And then she sees his picture at KFC. Right, 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 KFC. And she <laughs> talks like to her girlfriend like, what? That's the guy I went on a date with. I right. thought that was awesome because humility is something that you can't fake. 
especially when no one's watching. And the fact that he's like, oh, I'm just a student. I'm not too worried about it. I thought that was pretty cool. And you got to have a certain mentality to be a captain in cricket, to right. be the Australian captain. When you got Ponton looking over your shoulder, Wall looking over your shoulder, and Alan Border and everyone else, so to speak. So I, I felt that transition was very smooth. It could have gone way worse. What I liked about that was, to your point, his humbleness. He even says, I didn't do anything to earn the, the Australian captainship. Yeah. I just woke up and I'm captain one day. And, yep. you know, you almost he's almost saying, I don't want it like this. I didn't earn it. I'm not prepared for this job. Like he said, my biggest concern is not showing up to meetings and, 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 and um, doing selection and figuring out, you know, what kind of sign <laughs> I'm going to do. You know what I mean? So he was very humble about that. And I really love that. Not like I've been waiting about time. You know, I'm Patty Cummings. He, he didn't have that kind of attitude with uh, um, about it. So I really loved him. Going back to my favorite uh, 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 Australian cricketer, a little bit of Uzi. They give us some background on him and his family. And Uzi kind of said, like, look, I thought I'm done. You know what I mean? At this point, I didn't expect to ever be back on the team. I didn't expect to ever be back on the team. They're not bringing in 35-year-old uh, uh, cricketers. They're just not doing it, okay? And you see how he has this mentality of, I'm just going to go out and play my game and do whatever I do. And what happens, happens, all right? And it was just so, you know, you see him with his wife and his daughter and then you, you, you feel for him. But that's just the reality of an athlete. There's always somebody ready to take your, your place. And whether by circumstance or, again, politics and in sports, politics do exist or whatever. You know what I mean? For, for whatever reason, he hadn't got his shot in India. We saw the same thing with, of course, a sky. You ask yourself, how did it take this, this guy this long to get onto the Indian, Indian international team? But it happens. There's Scott selectors that don't so believe far. in you. Yeah. You know, there's pe certain people that have been scouted for a long time that the team, maybe an organization might have already put money behind and backing. And they're pushing this guy like Australia does with Cameron Green. Right. They're pushing this guy. This pushing is our So the reality is he thought he was done. He thought I'd, he, I would never suit up again for tests. And they go and get him for the ashes. And he delivers. And I absolutely Whoa. remember seeing it. And I love it. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. I know. There. I know. Anyone that hasn't seen episode two, Oops. we, I, no, you're fine. And I can't wait because there's a lot more meat on that bone that we're going to save for our, our next episode review. But the thing about this, this episode right here is, you know, looking at my own personal notes, I have a little bit of notes for episode one, a whole bunch for episode right. two, but there's a lot they had to kind of like introduce and they had to right. cover. And even though they didn't dive deep into some things, they still addressed it. They still talked about it. I just feel like for the redemption story, and I haven't finished the, se the season yet. Right. I've only watched the first two episodes. For the redemption story, I feel like let's go a little darker here. Not Tim Payne, but everything else. Losing to India at home. Right. Um, Ash is coming up. Coach situation is not working out too well. Like, let's get into that nitty gritty. Right. And then let's build up that redemption story. Because even though this is not going to talk about the T20 World Cup. Which they, they should. They win that, yeah, right? Yeah, that's a huge part of it. You know what I mean? But you got the Ashes. And we have the Ashes coming up in June. But you have the Ashes in Australia, where Australia always wins. You can't allow this to be a situation, like I was saying, to be lame duck, so to speak. Right. And they start off... And it, it made you feel like you were on the field where yes. you saw the yes. great Rory Burns. Oh, the platinum. platinum. Yes. <laughs> I remember, when I saw that, I was like, I remember watching that. And people were losing their mind. The platinum duck. Like, first ball of the ashes. It and this is so what happened. I think I missed. Like, I turned around like, what? Why are they cheering? What and I think Pat Cummins said something like, I, I just wanted to get that, for, not him personally, but just as captain. Yeah. Just want to get that first wicket out of the way. Right, right, right. First ball. And Stark just loses his mind. Like, first, whose house is first this? Ball. And I, what I love is that you would think as a captain, right, he would put himself out there. But no, he goes to Mitchell Stark, right? Yeah. And Mitchell Stark delivers from first oh, ball. Man. Gone. Like, like, I get chills just thinking about That's it. That's a great and way to start. It set the tone, right? And Australia held court in that first match. And I think one of the things that we saw was the benefit of having a bowler as a captain, a fast bowler, because he knows when exactly. to utilize those bowlers. He knows, hey, you know, again, later on, we talk we, as the episodes go on, you know, 
In certain places, you want to wait till the ball deadens up. In other places, you you know, you want that new ball. And as a fastballer, you know that. Where batsmen, if you're a captain, you're not thinking about when is the most effective time to utilize a bowler. You know what I mean? So there's benefits How to that. How many overs you know are you going to open up with? When are you going to bring those spinners in? Right. I mean, India, it's like ASAP. No. But even, <laughs> in, no. even in India, India went with Shami and Siraj in that first test match against right. Australia. And that worked out because they both got themselves a wicket for crying out loud before right. they went to the spinners. But... Getting back to this, I mean, it's it's absolutely a powerful moment, 100%. We get the first two Ashes in here, and, and Australia just dominates in both of those. Right. But I want to talk about some of the silly stuff that happened behind the scenes, because that's kind of my favorite well, stuff. Let me ask you a question. Did you believe them when they said that they didn't watch the video? Because they, they they even they said, like, what do you guys think about this test it. season one? And it's like, I don't like watching myself. I didn't watch it. Oh, I only saw bits and pieces. I would have watched every minute. Dude, I go back and watch our videos, and sometimes I crack oh, up, and I'm like, "Oh man, I could we should have done something better there." Or like, "Man, gave you shit." I was talking about how I went back and watched, uh, and if you guys didn't see it, I uh, <laughs> tweeted out the other day. Uh, it just came up in my stream of um, it was it was like what was it the ashes before? Which is the one I sent you the other day? It came out on the YouTube short. Oh, when Mumbai. You're talking, oh the Mumbai, Sam, yeah, but Sam. I feel he's like Sam's. It was hilarious. You know what I mean? Uh, so uh, who crushed Sam's? <laughs> Pat Cummins. <laughs> Patty Cummings. Oh, they said Daniel Sims. That was hilarious. So I go back and I'm like, we're silly, you know, YouTube. And they don't go back and they're on TV on the test. They better be lying it. because I don't believe honestly, it. I lost some respect. How are you going to do this? You're going to do, you're going to be talking about your passion, your love. And you're there as one of the guys talking about it. And you're not even going to get, oh, I think I might have saw one episode. What? First of all, you're lying. If you're not lying. lying, how cool are you? Oh, I'm so sorry. Not everyone could be in a, in a docu-series about sport that they're a world-class athlete in for crying out loud. Bro, if I got it on, like, TV, like, on an actual, like, even a, a, a show like that, that's what that's That's production. me walking away in the, in the corner. That's me. Bro, listen, that would be, like, my call. You go into my house and there'd be still images oh, or whatever. Yeah, it would be uh, 24 hours a day playing. Uh, that, that would be my uh, Amazon. You know how you got the... The, the 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 screensavers or whatever that would yeah. be my screensaver. Oh. I was on the test. I was, I was in thirty season five. Season five. Thirty six minute two forty five. Minute two forty five <laughs> for two seconds. What are you Absolutely. kidding me? Come on, come on. And then you rewatch it and you just walk in the background. I killed it. I was like, I, I needed to ask you that question. Like, did you believe they didn't really watch themselves? I was really <laughs> mad when they said that because it's a great series. They are narrating. They're talking about it. They're being pretty open. I feel like they got even more open in this one. And you're not going to watch it? Stop it. Um, you had Marnus there, right? And, and the chat kind of <laughs> spoiled it for me. They spoiled it for me before I watched it. He's a fool. This guy, and it looks like a really well-made grilled cheese sandwich he's making by himself. What's wrong with he's him? not saying the team what chef to do it. He makes a really, really nice, almost panini-style grilled cheese sandwich. And I even like the crispiness on the top and the outside. And then he puts it in the fridge. I like to put it in the fridge. Cold and then go out and have a few cheese. knocks. I mean, what? are you kidding me right now? What? Two hours later, it's at, it's at its perfect peak? Cold grilled cheese. This guy's got some serious issues. But now we know why the guy bats so long. You know why? Because there's no hot, oh, pocket. no hot pocket. No hot pocket matches there. He does, he don't got to be back in two minutes. That's a test snack. That's a test snack right there. <laughs> We're going to call it a minus snack. So you, before he goes out the bat, he hooks himself up with his grilled cheese. And then cold he puts toast. it in the refrigerator because he needs a cold to Cold grilled cheese. Dude. But whatever. He 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 is such a goofball, dude. And it's kind of funny. And I know I'm jumping to season two a little, or episode two a little bit. I'm pretty sure it's episode two. But when they talk about Smith and Marnus's relationship, uh, the bromance. And yes. I don't know who it was, but I think it might have been Uzi. Like, I really think that Marnus does not like Smith as much as Smith likes Marnus. <laughs> and remember, season one, Marnus yeah. idolized Smudge, right, right, right. right? right and right, right. so it's just it. He's just such an oddball. Yeah. Talking about Marnus, I think it was this episode. How lucky he is. The oh, luckiest gosh. man in cricket. He oh, should have been gosh. out several times. At one point, he walks away because, oh, I'm definitely out this time, right? And they're like, and no, no ball. No ball. <laughs> and he didn't look like, like, are you kidding me? I got nine lives. Dude. And you know what? I love I, I love Marnus, all right? How do you not? You know, I mean, loose honestly, bus change. I remember, do you I remember I kept messing up Lobachet and the guy's... Like in the chat said loose bus change. I was like, loose bus change? What do you mean? I can't sense. But Marnus Lobachet, he's one of those guys. It's funny because they talk about how he must he he and Smith are guys that are obsessed, obsessed. with batting, and that's all they care about. 
They care about batting and, and, and they're so obsessed with the game of test. And they're like two peas in a pod. And to your point, yeah, first test, it was more like Mon is following Smudge around like a puppy dog. Oh. And he was like, Can I please have one of your bats? He got one of the bats. And now it's a little bit different where there's more of a mutual respect. Alone. He's earned a respect. But, dude, he is one of the luckiest cricketers in the world. And I never saw it, but when they put it like this in the video, just oh in the ashes gosh. alone. like and even the players, they throw one of the, Yeah, he's lucky. And like, how many times did this guy get dropped? Like, two sitters. <laughs> Who was that saying? He was like, dude, dude, two sitters got dropped on him. Then when they finally get him out, it was a no ball. The guy, like you said, he's walking in the tunnel and the fence and telling them, go back. Go no back. Ball. I was like, what? <laughs> it was hilarious. It, it's, oh, it's like... He must have been dropped three or four times. Like, I mean, you got to be kidding me, and he's still alive. I also love Nathan Lyon, how this guy is a world-class spinning spinner, right? <laughs> Go down all time as one of the best ever to one do One of it. the best. And he's about to crap his pants because he might have to be the night watchman. The night watchman! Watch he's like, I think the night watchman is a stupid idea. <laughs> and not because I don't think it's particularly smart. I just don't want to be it. I don't want to be it. He's got his pads. He's freaking out. Oh, I know I'm going to go in now. I know I'm going to. And who is he sitting next to who's going to be the person after him, too? Another bowler. Like a second was, night watchman. I think it might have been. Um, and that guy was as cool as a cucumber. I think it might have been uh, uh, Mitchell Stark that was. Was it Mitchell Stark or somebody else? It was Mitchell Stark. Um, I can't remember. It might have been Cameron Green. I can't remember. No, it wasn't Cameron Green because Cameron Green's a legitimate bat. It was somebody yeah, else. Yeah, you're right. But. We talked about the Night Watchman. Remember the, the very first time we started watching cricket? And it was like, people were like, Gabe, you understand? The, I just like the name. It sounded cool. Love like, it. you understand that the purpose of the Night Watchman is basically to go in your sacrificial lamb. Yeah. And I said, perfect for me. You know what I mean? I'll throw <laughs> <That's right. laughs> sacrificial lamb. I'll throw That's myself under the wolves. And we talked about, like, do you wonder if, that, if, if boulders want to be a Night Watchman? A, I saw this today where, or, 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 or not today, but I saw it in this match where you saw how nervous he was. So we got the behind the scenes. It was the first time he's like, you know, no batsman wants to go be a white, night watchman because you know your job is just to last. You don't want to go down. You want to defend balls because you're trying to get to the next day. Yeah. And, and, and your wicket doesn't matter. But basically, you're going out there with the idea of just surviving. At the same token, there's bowlers out there that are trying to get you oh. out. And you, I go Thomas. back to the assault and it should be assault, all right, by Boomra when he beat up Jimmy Anderson. How dare you, Boomra? How dare you? Someone's got to do it. Bro, that was like third degree assault. And Boomra, I think, intentionally was doing no balls just so he could get another at him. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Was that a no ball? On Let me get another. You. Over. <laughs> I'm the seventh ball of the over. Just beat, just beat up poor Jimmy. Beat him up. Boy. But so you can tell, like, yeah, no bowler wants to be, especially if you're a bowler. I, he's a spinner, so I don't ever see you going out there as a spinner and being worried that the, that the other team's going to retaliate and, and throw, unless you're like a Shane Ward or something like that, where, you know, you, you throw a bouncer at somebody's head, head. But if you're like a, let's see, if you were like a, I don't know, who's known for being kind of nasty out there? A, a little Lord Siraj from India, he can sometimes throw bounces at people. Boomra. Who else is known for being nasty? Stop it. You know, oh, your boy Jaffa Mitchell Stark. Mitchell Stark, Jaffa Archer. If you're one of those guys that throws at guys, if you're the night watchman, you know the other side's like, oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to light you up like a Christmas tree. So I don't know why Nathan Lyon was so, other than, yeah, I don't want to get hit and I don't want to get out. But yeah, the night watchman, that was so funny because he was like, oh, at least I got somebody else going out there with me to be a night watchman. Of course, they didn't have to go out there because it. the two survived, but I thought that was a great part of the episode. That was hilarious. And just to finish up what you were saying, Ashwin loves being a night watcher because that guy can bat. <laughs> well, he can bat. Yeah. Ashwin's a legit bat, You know too. he goes out there like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a century today and tomorrow. I'm not worried about it. But episode one was a lot of fun. It was great to get back into this show. Right. It was great to watch it. There's a whole lot more we're going to talk about for season for episode two. I keep saying season and we've already talked about some of it because you can tell how excited we are. Right. Go ahead and let us know what you think, what your thoughts are on episode one. Let us know what you think about what we said. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, that's six runs.